Hi, everybody. This is Donna Reed, and I traveled enough with People 1976. This is the first recording that I've done in 2024, um, partly because of knee surgery, partly because people are busy, you know, through the holiday season. And I'm super excited to welcome Stacy Simmons today. Thank you, Stacy, for joining. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so Stacy um, had a post that was on the Up With People alumni web page from a number of years ago. And you know how like then somebody makes a comment and all of a sudden it pops to the top. So I think this was a 2019, I don't know, it's been a minute since you made that comment. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I think it was in 2021 maybe or 22. Was it? I don't know. All I know is it wasn't just yesterday. So yeah, uh, Stacy, tell everybody um, when you traveled and up with people, kind of where you lived and, you know, where you saw a show. Yeah, yeah. So um, originally I'm from Kodiak. Well, I'm from Kodiak, Alaska. I grew up in a, a village called Old Harbor. It's only 300 people. And the only way to get in or out is by plane or by boat. So I'm Sukhpia Galutik. I'm um, what? Sukhpia Galutik. Okay. Uh, that's that's uh, what our, my tradition or my indigenous culture. Or indigenous? My indigenous, okay. Oh, Sukhpiak. Uh, so both my parents are indigenous from the island. Both of them grew up on um, on villages on the island of Kodiak. So, wow. uh, so I'm Alaska native. Um, I so I grew up in a village, and then I ended up going to boarding school, like many people from Alaska, and I went to Sitka, Mount Edgecombe. I graduated there. And I was able to see a Up With People show coming through and they had the show in our um, in our gym at Mount Edgecombe. And it was a, um, our gym was an old airplane hangar. And so it was really cool. It was a fun show. And I just, I fell in love with it. I love, you know, I sang a little bit, but not a lot. Um, but I just, I love the concept of um, learning about, you know, different culture. I love the Up With People concept. It embodied what, what I thought would be, something that would be good for me. And it was, it was amazing. Uh, so I, I, as a junior, I applied and after the show and I got accepted. And so I started fundraising and working and I ended up touring um, cast E98. Okay. And e so I, I toured uh, as a student and then um, I went back to Denver and I did a warehouse internship because I caught on to the lighting uh, but really quickly, um, I was more of a stage flower. I wasn't really in the show, which was fine for me. I actually really gravitated towards that. And so, um, and then I did my internship in Denver and then I went back home and then, uh, I was in college in Anchorage and all of a sudden Jeff Devney called me up and they had lost their lighting technician. They had to go, um, they, the lighting technician had to go back home for a family emergency. And so it was like in December, right before Christmas break. And he asked me to be in Denver on January 2nd wow. uh, as a lighting technician. So I traveled in CAS D2000 as a lighting technician. And, and did that, did that mean then you took a break in college? Right. Uh, I did. I took okay. a long break. It took, I was a career student. In fact, I'm still going to school right now. I'm in my, my last three classes to get my master's through Gonzaga. So, um, yeah, so I'm a busy, busy lady that way. It's, but I got my bachelor's through the University of Alaska Fairbanks um, in tribal and local government administration with a rural development uh, emphasis. So I'm going to say something that's going to make me sound very not worldly and probably kind of stupid. So um, I, well, because I'm also from a very small town in Northwest Ohio, settled by, we had about 500 people, settled by nine Germans, brothers, siblings, you know, whatever. And so for you to tell me that your family is indigenous to this island, mm -hmm. in my brain, I have a look that I think oh, you yeah. should have or be, yeah. right? Um, I feel like for me, I probably kind of look German. The other part of me is Swedish, whatever. I don't know. All that judgment stuff that from some history book, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so, so when you say your parents are indigenous there, where did, where did your ancestors prior, where did they come from? Like your parents' parents? All from Kodiak. Um, so oh. our people oh. have been traced back. I mean, our Alutic people have been traced up back on the island 12,000 years ago. So my grandparents, my great grandparents are all from the island. Um, but but why do I look a, not as um, yeah. the typical native that you would think 
uh, or yeah. Yeah. Alaska Native. Um, we have, well, Alaska was owned by Russia. Um, yeah. My maiden name was Pestrikov. Ah. Uh, my name is Olga. Um, Russian Orthodox Christian. That's where my name Stacy came from is Anastasia or Anastasia. Um, okay. Church name. And so um, we grew up very much in a in a home where we had both Aleutic words and Russian words in, in intermingled, and so I didn't know how, sometimes what the which one was which. Um, so, but uh, so basically, we have a really uh, really strong Russian Scandinavian influence here uh, in in Kodiak. So there's a lot of Hawkinsons and Svens and Jurgens. And so, so there's both Russian and then Scandinavian um, <clears throat> influence. Yeah. And so I do look, uh, and I was born blonde and I do have blue eyes. And so my dad had black hair and dark skin, dark eyes. My mom has dark hair, dark skin. Um, and I just came out a uh, little different colors that it back. came out. Uh, and I have sisters who have green eyes and some have black hair and some have brown. I have five sisters. And so um, I just came out a little bit more, a little lighter. So well, I get that question often. I, um, a lot of the time. Well, good. Then I don't feel quite so stupid. No, so. a lot of people don't uh, see that I'm Alaska native. Some people do. Um, and some people don't. So some people ask if I'm different ethnicities, but yes, I, um, yeah. And, yeah. and in, in a village that I grew up in, I was even very Caucasian looking. I mean, they called me Swiss Miss. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So, yeah. Yeah, that's that's just so interesting. So when you say that about the Russian Orthodox, I did one of the little Alaskan cruises that half the world yeah. does when they've never been to Alaska and then met up with an alumni in Juneau. I think that's where we saw a really small Russian Orthodox church. I want to say it was in Juneau. I can't, I can't be a hundred percent positive because you know, when you're popping off a boat in yeah. different towns, you kind of don't remember all the details. And now that you say that, I'm like, oh yeah, I yeah. remember that, you it know, a beautiful Russian Orthodox church that's in the middle of the main street that you have to drive around. And so that's, I think it's got a really cool Orthodox. Church. Oh, that's neat. That's neat. So, um, okay, up with people. I'm going to ask you the up with people questions and we're going to get on to the rest of your life, which I yeah, think seems- No, and I should probably say, so um, in my second year, I actually met yeah. my husband. He was the star of the show. Uh, his name was Brock <laughs> Simmons. Uh, we became best friends for a year before we were able to date because of rule number nine, because also not number nine, but like, I'm sorry. I sh Can you edit that out? No, it's No, it's funny though, because you're not- if people have said it at in-person things yeah yeah and we never well, it's, it, and it was but... because staff I was a staff member he was a student and so we oh, were best like friends. Rob in the cradle kind of I, thing well he's two months younger than me and I think I was probably the youngest staff member I was 20 I was 20 when I was a staff member when I was wow. a lighting technician I turned 21 on the road and so wow. I was really I was quite young I was younger than most of the students and so yeah. Yeah. And so anyway, I met my husband. He, uh, his, like I said, he was the lead singer and guitar player of the show. And, um, and I, I always knew I was going to come home. So when we ended tour, I think we, we were in Japan when we ended and then we, okay. went, we both went our separate ways. He's from Montana. And then, um, you know, the stars aligned and we yeah. ended up, um, getting together and we've been together ever since and we've been married for 21 years so oh nice that's a great story that's a great story so so tell me do your I you have two children is that yes. right a I have boy a son and a girl? That's 16 and a, do, uh, a daughter that is 15 so they're okay. both in basketball right now um, okay we talk about up with people often you know I wondered about that like if up with people had been part of their life you know yeah. they've yeah. never seen a show I would love I mean but you know, it's hard. You live in Kodiak. I'm on an island. And so, um, you know, <laughs> it, it's not easy to get off the islands uh, a lot of times. So just bringing your kids uh, to a show. I, I, if they ever came to Anchorage and I, I would totally bring my kids up to watch a show in Anchorage. Oh, um, how much extra housing do you have on Kodiak for guests? Because, you know, you could maybe just like encourage a reunion there. 
and then I would love <laughs> it. And actually, we've got a new convention center that they're building right now. Um, we've got about four hotels here, but there's like billions of Airbnbs right now. So yeah. um, a small reunion, probably about 300, maybe 250 to 300 people could be plausible. That's a that's an interesting an interesting thought. The way that they're planning Ireland this year is mm -hmm. like on a university campus where I don't know if you've paid attention to this, but it's a week and it's, you know, different days wow. and you can choose different activities and um, and then and it's kind of an a la carte thing where you pay for different things based on what you want to do and stuff like that. So it's a and that came as the result of interviewing alumni. Now, to be fair, the older alumni probably more because there's more flexibility in, li in lives, right? Yeah. If you don't have kids that are in school yet, and I'm sure the Europeans are thrilled. I, I'm imagining they're going to have a great European turnout, you know, oh my God, this that, year. That would be wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me, um, when you traveled, uh, what was your favorite song in the show? Uh, probably one to one. Mm, that's I, a good I one. Do you still remember the motions? Yeah, I, yeah. Again, I was literally a wall. I was a flower in the background, but um, you know, as I watched it, that was one of my favorites. I just thought it was beautiful, and um, yeah. Also, yeah. the dancing and and the sign language was really beautiful. So yeah. So, is there a song that you had in your show that you just thought was really stupid, or uh, because that's I've so told <laughs> I've told my opinions to, um. Paul Caldwell, and he's, he says they can't all be Grammy winners. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, I've I've not thought about that for a while. I think you know, at, towards the end of our my second year, I was I was getting tired, and I wanted to go home. Uh, yeah. So I think almost, and like everybody, you know, it's it's almost like you're just you you can sing everything in your head, and you're you're just done. So, yeah, we're like, oh, we're doing that again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, but honestly, I, like, I don't have a one that I hated that comes to mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, um, I, I, you know, at reunions, they always have backing tracks and you do the same three or four songs. And I said, I, I really want to have a reunion where everybody can do the silly songs that they may or may not remember, but that somebody who did that number or danced that number remembers, you know, I just, you know, let's wing it. But, but nobody ever takes my ideas, Stacey. I think the one thing is like when um, the song comes on where we had to get on stage, it's like, it triggers me every single time I hear it. Like both songs. It was like, come on Eileen. I think one was my first one. And then the second year was, oh gosh, I just had it in my head and it flew out. But anyway, That's right. the, the, you know, the zombie, you're like, hmm, go towards the stage. And it's like always triggers. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember, you know, little memories pop up. So yeah. That's funny. That's funny. All right. So um, you're, you're back in Alaska. Yeah. Um, you were going to school a lot, but what, what interested me when I read your post was what you do for a living and kind of you were in a way you were advertising for people mm -hmm. to come to Kodiak. So tell everybody what you do now and yeah. kind of the evolution into that. Yeah. So um, Kodiak has the largest brown bears in the world or the largest bear in the world. Uh, but let me back up a little quick. Yeah. My actual job um, is the, I'm the director of shareholder services for an Alaska native corporation. Okay. So there's a lot of history about Alaska and uh, native corporations versus um, let's say uh, like in the lower 48, you have reservations in Alaska. We don't, we have uh, for-profit corporations. So the corporation that I work for, for is called Koniak. Both my parents were a part of the corporation. So it's, it means a lot to me to work for my people. And that's, I've always wanted to come back home and work for my people. So this is, this is good, great work that I feel like uh, that we're doing with Koniak. So Koniak owns probably about 30 some odd companies all over the United States. Okay. And, uh, we do a lot of, lot of government contracting on the East Coast. Uh, and what we do is we have these companies, they generate revenue. And with the, re with the revenue, uh, it comes to my department, which is the shareholder services department, and I administer benefits. So we do distributions for dividends, but we also do things like elder distributions, like special elder distributions. We do youth scholarships. We have a donation policy. Uh, we have cultural programs. So my department, and, and I manage people here in Kodiak, and then I have uh, people in, Anchor, in the Anchorage office that I manage as well. 
Uh, we administer all the benefits for our shareholders. So that's my department, wow. which is kind of, it really lends itself to up with people and how, you know, I love like my shareholders that walk in and I'm able to work with them. And, you know, they knew my parents, my grandparents. And uh, so it's, it's lovely to be in the position to be able to, um, you know, Cognac generates the revenue, then I'm able to to dis help disperse it to our shareholders in, in different ways. So that's okay, let me job. Let me ask real quickly. So in order then to be a shareholder, did they purchase shares and must they be an indigenous person? Yeah. Or how so okay. in 1971, it was the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act. It was okay. A, it was a um it was a lands dispute between Alaska Native people and the state of Alaska. And right. so what happened, what came into law was that because um, we were able to, what was happening was there was a lot of development because Alaska was a young state and they needed money to fund their government. So they started working with the oil industry and they started acquiring land and started to de develop land. Well, yeah. our, we have Aboriginal title to the land. So we, uh, we basically put a land freeze on it. The Secretary of the Interior created a land freeze for the Alaska Native people. And uh -huh. we had to settle with the state of Alaska in order for them to be able to develop. So in 1971, the law came about. And long story short, we got a portion of our land back. We, about 10% of Alaska. And then we got a monetary distribution or monetary, or we got this money. Well, and yeah. then we were, but we were tasked with creating for-profit corporations. So oh. from that came 13 regional corporations, which Coney Egg is one of them. Okay. And then there was, there's 240 village corporations. So each of those village corporations um, reflect, um, and I would say this generally, and I don't want to go into <laughs> big, yeah, yeah. Person, but for instance, this is an example. My mom was from a Fognac. My dad was from Old Harbor and they're both under the region of Coniag. So they, my dad had a hundred shares of Old Harbor native corporation stock and a hundred, my mom had a hundred shares of a Fognac native corporation stock. And they each got a hundred shares of the regional of Coniag stock. So, Got it. so we had to be 18 years of age on a certain date in 1971. Now, we, so we, they didn't purchase them. None of our shares are able to be sold. They have to be either gifted or willed. You could only win, will them to your lineal descendants. Uh, wow. But we don't them to anybody. Um, but we encourage our, our people to gift shares if they are going to, or will shares to their um, Alaska native descendants. Because when they're when somebody who's not Alaska Native, say it's like a spouse that they give their shares to after they pass, that is non-voting. So, um, and I don't like that's a lot of information, but basically, it's super fascinating for a person who, um, who's never even remotely been in that arena. You know, I, I think that. Uh, living in Arizona versus Ohio. I mean, we had a lot of Native American names, right? And and you learn where you live, you learn those names and, and all that. Whether I knew anything about those tribes is another thing. So living in Tucson, there is way more direct um, conversation learning related to, you know, Southern Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, all of that than there ever was. And yet I can't even pretend to know the details of, of things. So, so that's, and, and honestly, in my business, I'm a realtor. People mm -hmm. pass away. They marry for a second time. The kids live across the country, you know, or something like that. So I, the whole idea of do you gift it? Do you will it? Do you have a descendant is, mm -hmm. is a fascinating thought process to think yeah. about, you know, managing it and everything. It so cool. hmm. Yeah. And, and my department also manages all of the estate processes with the shareholders. So, so I, I know, you know, I, I know a bit about the process of how it works. Um, but also, um, you know, it's it, like you were talking about having descendants. One of the, our big things uh, is maintaining that we connect with our shareholders and our descendants. So one of our big pushes is that we want to register everybody as a descendant. Like I was a descendant before I became a shareholder. Then my parents gifted me shares. Right now, I'm a shareholder of three different corporations, and oh, okay, so, and I'm able to get benefits. Things like um, with my mom's uh, corporations, for instance, they have a elk hunting subsistence program. So I've gone elk hunting, uh, well, I've gone elk hunting, elk hunting four times, and I got free elk. 
Wow. Um, yeah. So, so, and, and that's a subsistence food for our people. And of course we share all of our food. Um, but so for instance, that's one program for a village corporation. And recently my, my dad's village corporation, uh, both my, my kids are shareholders of, of all of the corporations. I made sure that they were, but my son just did a bison hunt and he was able to get his first bison. And he also got his first seal harvested because, and you have to be Alaska native to get a seal. Um, and then, uh, you know, they got deer and ducks. So they had a uh, really good subsistence hunt. And, and you know, it's great because there's like five different families and elders that, you know, my mom has her fish box and her her meat box that she's going home with um, that has elk, deer and, and gee, you know, ducks in it. And so, um, yeah, so we're just, I mean, super blessed. Subsistence living is is a, definitely a part of my, uh, our people's, yeah. uh, what we do, but I'll, a big part of my life and my husband's life too. So I pulled my husband from Montana right in and he fits in really well. But for and him, yeah, when you didn't say he was from Chicago or something, because I was no, like, okay, that'd be Montana. very different. He's coming from, coming from, oh, I'm like, oh, Montana, that was probably a good fit. So yeah. I want to, um, because I have only the free Zoom and it only goes a little while, I want to talk to you a little bit about the bears. Oh um, yeah, I'm sorry. So so uh, in 2019, I took over the Kodiak Brown Bear Center. It's a subsidiary company of Kodiak. And the big thing about it is it's a high-end ecotourism bear viewing facility. But the big thing is that it's all on Kodiak land. So it's private land that it's on. So you won't be getting anybody coming in unless they're permitted or we know they're coming. So at the lodge, it's only eight guests at a time. I've got a chef there. I've got a hospitality person. I've got a manager out there. And then I have two guides. I have a main guide and a, a lead guide and an assistant guide. And we have a 30 foot catamaran that we take people out there uh, bear viewing at different locations. Um, everything that's out at the lodge had to be brought in by plane or helicopter. And so uh, when you get here, it's an all-inclusive trip that starts from Kodiak. So as, when you jump on the plane, the plane is covered and it's a 45 minute float plane ride away from Kodiak. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's called Carlick Lake and it's got the highest concentration of bears in uh, here in, in Kodiak because of the, uh, the location it has early and late runs of salmon that come through. So wow. uh, the lodge is amazing. Uh, it's um and like I said, uh, our chef Bryant, he's um, he's classically trained in French and Mediterranean cuisine. And right now he's in Thailand taking classes so he can come back. And uh, I always say people come for the bears, but they stay for the food because it's it can so take if he can take that meat, those products and turn them into a food like he learned about in Thailand. But maybe it's bison or something. I mean, that's, you oh, know. Yeah. Super creative. That's cool. Yeah. And we yeah. do, um, and all of our fish that we get brought in is from a tribe here locally that processes fish, the Shunak tribe. Um, and they, the, so yeah, I mean, it's an amazing place. Um, we open up in mid July and we end in end of September for bear viewing. And then in October, we have a fly fishing season because we have a steelhead run, which is a huge deal for fly fishermen. Um, and then we own almost all the land that goes along the river that goes to the um to, to the lagoon and then the ocean so we um you know we own some cabins along the anyway the only cabins out there and so we have a fly fishing program as well which is pretty exciting so um okay when when this is all done when i post it on mm -hmm. the up with people alumni page and i tag you yeah, I'm going to ask you to fill in some things like the spelling of the tribe and, you yeah. know, or the group that you're, you're in the, yeah. and, and to share more about this, because you know that you're speaking to a traveling group. And in my brain, I'm like, I wonder if my kids would do this, this would be a cool thing to do. Like, who do I know that, that might want to go do something like this? Yeah, um, it's, you know, it, even it's my older crazy. brother who, yeah, it, well, it's, it's definitely for the adventure tourism adventure yeah. because I, and I would express that and which really lends itself to other people quite nicely um, mm -hmm. because it's we're immersed into the it, it's not only that you're sitting there bear viewing you're you know you're hiking this trail there's two different bear viewing locations that you're getting into one could be on you know one location that we have is like on an archaeological dig site that's the oldest on the lake that's about 4000 years old um, so, you know, we, we also have archaeological digs going on during the season in August 
which is pretty, pretty exciting. Uh, last year, there was a huge um, find about our people that we did, that we learned about, which is super exciting. So we are trying to incorporate culture into the lodge as well. But yes, yeah, I can totally fill in all the blanks. And it, it again, it, it does lend itself well. And, and if people do book through me directly, I can definitely give them a discount. Um, especially for up with people alumni, I'm like, yeah, let's get, I, you know, I, so I'm, I'm thinking about the trips that I do because I've done some river cruises recently mm -hmm. and they always have four or five options of things to do. And they give you ability levels, you know, for what you can do. And if it's riding up a hill, I can't do it. I've had two knees replaced if it's, you know, and so that would be something that I think would be important to know, like, okay, is this level one, you got to walk a half a mile and you're going to sit and have yeah. coffee or is it, you know going up yeah, the, um... the one place that we do like hike the longest and it probably is about 250 yards oh um okay it has actually we built a trail so we have geo blocking mats down and there oh, so you have a flat surface that you're walking you're not walking in the uh so that's the longest location is actually okay. geo blocked and yeah. um anyway it's easy to walk uh, yeah yeah. But the other locations, it's you're not you're not walking too much into them. Uh, we do have people of a lot of different abilities come sometimes. Uh, and I would say a lot of times just staying on the boat and bear viewing is a lot of fun just because you get so close to the to the bears and they're they're right on the water. They're right fishing right in front of you. But they're yeah. not scared of you either. You have to understand walking in that you could be 20 feet away from a bear who's feeding um, and, you know, we're very safe. We, we take, you know, that safety is our highest priority. So we have the whole system set up um, and we're trained very well. We have a bear biologist on staff who has her doctorate in bearology, which, which is a thing. Uh, she's from Ireland, actually. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so the ability level, um, I would say you, you, you have, have to be able to walk at least 10 minutes. Uh, it's oh, not okay. super hard or difficult, but um we yeah. do have people that really want to hike. So, you know, sometimes we'll break off into two groups and, and one group will, but that's the good thing about having a small group. Yeah. Yeah. Super, super interesting. I'm always looking for different things to do. And um, assuming this knee in another, you know, year is in good shape or whatever, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it sounds fascinating compared to what I did, which was just a minimal tour, you know, back in 18, um, I did that with, with some friends and stuff. So, all right. Um, we're going to share that. Now I'm going to ask you the whole, uh, did you travel and eat anything that you would never eat again? Natto. What is that? In Japan, it's fermented soybeans in Japan. Yeah. Oh my gosh. No, I, and I think they did it. They, they did it. It, it was a cast thing where they blindfolded you, you're up on stage and you had to like guess. And I don't know how I got picked. Um, yes. they gave me natto and I just, it was horrid. I kind of did something like that in person at the Cactus Lounge uh, last summer at the reunion. I had somebody come up blindfolded and tasted things that the different people had brought. And, and so like, it, uh, you know, the salted licorice from Scandinavia or mm -hmm. something like that, depending on, you know, what you had. Um, what about, was there anything you tasted for the first time anywhere that you loved? Um, so many things for the first time, because my first, uh, well, I had a European tour. Um, my first tour was happy in Europe. Uh, one of the things that stick out though, I was, I remember being in, I think it was Belgium and they found out that I was Russian because of my last name, Hester mm -hmm. yeah. And so they made me borscht and I'd never <laughs> had borscht before. And what'd you think? I did. I mean, it wasn't the worst thing I've ever tasted, but I wasn't the biggest fan. Um, since then, I've actually have an appreciation for borscht. I've ta I've tasted some really good stuff, but um, yeah, yeah fun. The that like drops in my head. Also, I I remember being in um in France and getting a whole chicken. I think for one of our our meals on the you know, like a whole chicken, I believe the whole chicken. Oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. All right, so um, you have a fifteen and a sixteen year old. And Up With People is continuing. I sat in on a communications meeting um, yesterday or the day before, I don't remember, um, related to the upcoming tours and what they are doing. And, um, you know, one of the things that I like to ask those who traveled and met their spouses or just had a good experience, 
what would you say to either your children if they said, I want to go do this, mom? Um, or, or how would you say to other Kodiak natives? You yeah. say, what was this thing you did? I want to go do this. What would you tell them? Well, you know, I, I love one that I met my husband that way. I, I love the story that we can tell. And, um, you know, and it often brings up, you know, when you meet people and if they're musical or you meet kids that are really into music or, yeah. theater, you know, I, I often plug up with people. Um, I did work for a tribe here in Kodiak and this young man that my boss's son ended up learning how to play guitar from Guitar Hero. I know this sounds funny. No, I've heard that. Yeah. But then he learned how to play guitar and I was like, you should, you, you should go to other people. And he did. And he toured and he was the guitarist. And so I'm, I'm a huge advocate for talking about other people. Um, Oh. And, and you know, my kids know all about it. We have the pictures up. They think they call my husband cringy because he, you know, had this, had a purple, like, uh, his show shirt. Frankly, One costume. of his show shirts was purple. And it was my, yeah. my daughter just was like, oh my gosh, dad, that's so cringy. Yeah. Well, um, and when, when you guys were traveling, the, the costumes were still given to you. When my son traveled in 13, mm -hmm. um, they just had to bring shirts and had a color palette. And then, oh. once, yeah, once they got there, they were like, okay, you're going to wear the aqua shirt in the show, that kind of thing. Well, that so. would have been nice because I hated oh. my show outfit. You know, actually, he said that in his interview. He goes, I think it's nice when people can choose what makes them feel comfortable oh, in yeah. what they're wearing instead of saying, here, you have this double knit green dress. Oh, my gosh. Want. And, you, you know, I remember them being so, like, specific that we couldn't, like, share or, or like, switch I, yeah. this girl that looked like me Alana from yeah. Canada her and I decided one day that we we're going to switch outfits because we looked a lot alike and uh and then they caught us and they were not happy so everybody has those kind of a stories when I think about I know. you know what did you do what did you do everybody did something like you know by by the sec third semester you know third part of the year or something you were like oh yeah we're doing we're doing oh, this yeah. or that so well I'm gonna wrap it up um I I normally have a bunch of these filmed way in advance and then I don't share them for two or three weeks. But since I haven't done one for a while, I'll probably share it pretty quickly. Oh, and, um, yeah. oh, I, and, and you'll, um, I'll have to, I'll have to look up your son. I don't know if he, or your husband, if he's on Facebook and you know, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. well, and it was funny. Like I thought it was going to be a rock star. He ended up being a state trooper. So he was the last, there you go. Year for 20 years and he just retired and now he is the executive director of the visitors bureau here in Kodiak. So Fun. if anybody's interested in learning more about Kodiak, go to discover uh, Kodiak. And um, my husband will an probably answer the phone half the time because it's a small, small space, but he, he loves Kodiak and he's all about. What I should do is person. find that number and just call him and just call him by name and see if he like, you know, like, <laughs> Oh, so I understand you were up with people. See if he, <laughs> He'd probably hang up or, you know, <laughs> if it's the cop in him, he'd probably ask you more questions. Like, how do you know that? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, what a pleasure. Thank you so much for doing this. And um, gosh, I, I'm just going to have to learn more. Might put this on my, on my list. You oh, know, please. Um, well, Kuyana Shinak, that means thank you very much in Lutik. Um, awesome. It was lovely um, going down uh, a little memory lane for a bit. And um, yeah, I, Perfect. if anybody's ever interested in coming to the Brown Bear Center, call, call you know, the number yeah. and talk, talk, just say they're up with people, alumni, my guy that works for me, he he knows that I've gone and traveled and I was telling him about this. So he, so yeah, we, I already awesome. found a discount for anybody that wanted. Well, it'd be to really out. fun if this just brought you some business, you know, and got well, to see some other also, I'd love to just get people on the island. It is right. one of the most beautiful places. And I'm going to, I know you're getting off, but like, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to. Uh, wow. Zodiac oh. is gorgeous. And yeah. we have so much on this island to worth sharing with people. And I think I would love to share it with more people from other people. Wonderful. Thank you, Stacy. Have a good rest of the day. And I'll tag you when I post it. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.